All right, guys, another update on Project Hellstang. So today is Monday. We've got six freaking days until we leave with this thing for the Hot Rod Power Tour. So we've got our next round of tuning that's going to happen on Thursday afternoon. So between now and then, I need to get a bunch of stuff fixed. <laughs> So yesterday during our tune session, we had first found out that I had the wrong map sensor. Um, so I ended up getting that swapped out. We finally have a 2.5 bar GM, you know, like LSA, LS9 type of map sensor that works, that is reading correctly on the Holly. The other two I'd gotten from like, one from Amazon, one from the auto parts store, they were both incorrect. Even when I looked them up for like a Chevy Camaro ZL1, their system was just showing the wrong map sensor. So. We got that figured out and we also had an issue where my fuel pressure sensor, which has been working for like the last month, that thing decided to die yesterday. It just wasn't working, We're reading uh, an error. So got another one of those on the way. Also found out during tuning that my alternator is not working. So if you guys remember, I, I actually rebuilt this thing, had the uh, housing powder coated black. So. Eventually, I'm going to swap this housing over to the new one, but I just ended up ordering a new alternator just because we don't have time to mess with it. So that new alternator will be here tomorrow also, and then I can swap it out. So um, today, I'm going to start tearing this apart. We're going to get this fuel pressure sensor out. We'll get the alternator out. Um, the tuner was also not a big fan of how this thing's kind of kinked. Um, so to try to fix that, I've got a couple 90s. So kind of my idea is maybe a 90 out and then another 90 back this way which will get this straight, I'm hoping. So that'll be here tomorrow too. So we'll get the charge pipe off. Um, once the charge pipe's out of the way and the alternator too, it'll give me some more access to this one black hose here coming out of the um, thermostat housing. I think that thing has been leaking and I can't quite get to it very easily. So with this stuff out of the way, I'll be able to tighten that up and it will be good to go. Other things to mention yesterday, we did get the static timing set. Um, so he was able to do the static to 25. I put a mark on the balancer. We were able to rotate the distributor, get that all good. So now that's perfectly timed, all that good stuff. Um, and then we found out the IAC wasn't working. And the reason why is with these Ford uh, 550937 um, harnesses, it's made for like the Chrysler IAC, not the GM one. So we just had to flip around the wires on spot A and spot C on the connector. And then that worked just fine after that. But I never would have figured that out. So thank God that guy was uh, helping me tune this thing. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and get to work. Start tearing this thing apart. So this is kind of what I'm thinking. So I actually found uh, this coupler I had laying around, but I ended up ordering um, a similar coupler, but I still need, um, or no, this is actually the wrong coupler because this goes from two and a half, or sorry, yeah, two and a half to three inch, which will work for this part. This is a three inch pipe right here. But uh, I still need the other two and a half inch to two and a half inch 90. So I'm kind of thinking 90, and then just a little, we'll put a little piece of pipe in here, some exhaust pipe to clamp to, and then we have the other 90 here, and then this will kind of keep this thing, you know, nice and straight. We can also cut this back a little bit if we need to. Um, the only thing we'll have to figure out is the uh, blow off valve there because it looks, well, you know what, I could space it out so it wouldn't hit the uh, throttle body, and then it'll lay down a lot better because uh, right now it's hitting the side of the thing, but we can move this out. So I think that that'll work. Um, you know, Maybe not ideal having a 90 right out of your turbo, but who cares? Look at how short this pipe is, right? So that's going to work out just fine. Oh, so, yeah, so that should work tomorrow. Let me get this back off and get on to getting this alternator out of here. All right, so alternator removal, super easy. It's just a one 15 millimeter bolt, one 13 millimeter bolt, and then a couple connectors on the back, boom, and then also take the belt off. The belt, I think, was a 15 millimeter too to be able to get that thing. So now we got it on the bench. Uh, I'm gonna get this uh, pulley off. We're gonna transfer the pulley to the new alternator, 
and then you know later on in life probably next winter we'll have to pop this thing apart and we are going to transfer this cover to the new one um, but i just don't feel like messing with that right now so we'll do that at a later time but at least let's just get this thing swapped over All right, so it never even occurred to me, but probably before I bolted that thing on the car a couple months ago, I probably should have just taken it to the auto parts store and had them test it for me to make sure it freaking worked before I wasted my time putting it on the car, and now I'm having to swap it out. So, yeah, that was kind of a, a little bit of an overlook, but this thing's all apart, so tomorrow when the new one comes, that'll be easy. We can bolt it on. The last thing to do, I think it's the last thing, I just got to get out this fuel pressure sensor, which... This should be pretty easy. So it's pretty easy to get to. I'll probably just undo this whole fitting and stuff. Then we can get it out, get it completely undone, get it out. And then tomorrow, you know, new Teflon tape, get that thing screwed in real tight so it doesn't leak because that was actually leaking before. And uh, then, yeah, then we should be good to go. Then we can be able to start it up again. And, oh, we also need to tighten down some of these hoses too. So I got these all these different hoses over here on top I because I'm not sure exactly where it's leaking. I'm pretty sure it was this black one, but I tightened this guy as well. And, oh, and then I tightened the actual thermostat housing. It, it was already tight, though. I gave it like eighth of a turn or something. Um, so hopefully that's good now. I didn't see anything else leaking under there. Um, the radiator is still showing full, too, so that's good. Uh, might be, I mean, it needs to be still burped probably, but at least it's close. The other thing I was just thinking is, man, we are lucky, like, None of these freaking tubes in here were leaking or dripping or anything. It's all nice and dry underneath the high ram because with all the wiring and stuff in here now, there would be like, it would be freaking horrible because there, you guys can't tell, but these go into like metal pipes right here. So there's clamps on, on both of these guys. And then there's some clamps are on this side too. So what a pain in the ass if that ever starts leaking, but at least it's good. Um, so this should be pretty easy. I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen this, get this out of the way, and then we can actually take this whole piece off right here and then get that thing separated and we should be good. All right, so here's our little sensor. This guy is the one that all of a sudden just went bad. So hopefully the sensor is actually bad. There's not some kind of electrical connector issue or something, but um, I actually bought two of these sensors. So these are uh, zero to 100 PSI sensors. I bought both of these things off Amazon um, and they were really cheap, like 15 bucks. So um, I decided to give them a shot and one of them is still working. The one that's for the oil pressure sensor. Hopefully it works for a long time. And then this one, you know, failed, right? So. That's kind of what happens when you have cheap parts like that, right? It's 50-50 whether they're going to work or not. So uh, I ordered two more to come from Amazon, so that way I can replace one, and then I'm going to keep one in the car, uh, especially for power tour in case we have any other issues, I can be able to swap it out. Because, um, you know, you want to have fuel pressure, right? Just make sure there's no issues and stuff like that. And I think the tuner can do some different things in the tune by having the fuel pressure, you know, in case you lose fuel pressure, they could shut it down, stuff like that. So anyway... So we'll wait for tomorrow. We'll get the new sensor slot back in this little uh, fitting, and then we should be good. That's going to be it for this one, guys. We'll check back in tomorrow when some more of these parts come, and we'll work on this thing some more. And hopefully, fingers crossed, man, hopefully we can get this thing at least ready for tuning on Thursday. And then if all goes well Thursday, then hopefully we can be driving it over the weekend, and we have to leave bright and early Sunday morning. So like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It helps the channel, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.